You are listening to the Urban Sports Scene on Empire Media at EmpireMedia.com. And Wole and I are back. We are now bringing you HBCU Corner. It's been a minute. Thank you for following us at the MEAC tournament. We had a fun time, of course. Shout out to Howard University for winning the whole thing on the men's side, on the ladies' side, Norfolk State. But now we are back with a special guest, and he is none other than Coach Todd Bozeman of formerly University of California, as well as Morgan State University, currently a play-by-play -play analyst for HBCU Go Network. Coach Bozeman, what's happening, brother? What's going on, fellas? How you guys doing? Glad to have you on. Glad to be Absolutely. on. Glad to be on. It's good to have you. And Wole, I'm going to already get this dude some flowers because he covered a UMES game earlier in the season. Of course, everybody knows that's, that, that's our alma mater. And he covered, I think it was the GW game coach. Is that correct? Yes, yes. And, and Coach, coach Bozeman called it. Wole, he's going to be good this season. Of course, you know, they had the big upset over Temple. Just had a great season. One of the best seasons in our memory. So, Coach, you are, you are now family, just for that reason alone. <laughs> hey, well, thank you for that. I appreciate that. All right, so, so Coach Bozeman, you were pretty young when you were at Cal. And um, I know you got some good memories when you were coaching over there. We'll ask you a few questions related to that. And then, of course, you went to Morgan State, as I mentioned. So give the people some insight. Who had the better homecoming? <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, well, I mean... You talking about of the HBCUs? Because I've been to quite a few. I hadn't been down to a ts homecoming, but uh, they really did. They don't do homecoming like that at uh, at uh, the PWIs. They don't. They, <laughs> they don't do homecomings like that. It's 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 a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different. So I'm I'm a, I'm gonna say that. But uh, but your cow was um, your cow was a it was a it was a it was a fun time. Uh, it, it, it was a point in my career that really has uh, shaped and made an imprint on my on my career. We just had the 30th year anniversary of the team that beat Duke in the, to go to the Sweet 16. So um, all the guys came back. I only had one assistant. A lot of people don't know that story, but I only had one mm. assistant that year. So and he's with the, the 76ers now. So he wasn't there. Jason wasn't there because he's playing, but they all did videos and um, and sent them in. And then Jared Hass was was with Stanford playing. So, but they put together a video. And uh, the thing I thought that that stood out that I didn't even realize it at the time was thirty years ago, and we were all in our twenties. The players, the coaches, everybody, we were in our twenties when we had that fantastic run. But after that, I coached some some outstanding players that are doing some big things now in basketball all the way around. And it was a great time, but the Morgan state, Morgan state university will always be a part of my heart, uh, 13 years there. And we did some great things there as well. Uh, and, and obviously going to postseason three years, NCAA tournament two, winning it three years in a row and, 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 and beating Maryland, Arkansas, DePaul. I mean, we had some great wins and some fun times and, and uh, I will always cherish those memories. So a lot of people, they treat me like I went to an HBCU. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't. I went to University of Rhode Island. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Rhode Island grad. But I feel like I, I, I went to an HBCU because I've, I've experienced all of it. So there's not a piece that I didn't experience. And uh, the homecomings were off the hook. Um, mm. We were at other schools. We actually played UMES for their homecoming one year, I think, uh, because you guys do it in basket with basketball and not mm -hmm. with football. Um, so it's always, homecoming is always a great time. Absolutely. You answered that just like a coach, man. You know, I, I'm glad you did, though. You're showing love to Kyle and Morgan State at the same time. But we already know who got the best homecomings, Bole. Um, You missed the J kid, and I know you get this question a lot. I've heard you talk about it, but for our listeners, just share um, what your experience was like coaching the young Jason Kidd and how you feel about all that he's achieved in his coaching career, NBA career. Well, really proud of him. I mean, what else could it be? I mean, he's a Hall of Famer. Uh, can't say that that I say that that I saw Hall of Fame, but you could tell he was a great one. Um, I don't know if anybody thinks of Hall of Fame, but they think of, hey man, he's one of the best to ever play. Uh, so. Um, very, very uh, proud of him for that. I spent the training camp down there this year 
um, mm. in Dallas for training camp. And uh, unfortunately, they're having a tough time right now. And a lot of that is because they can't really defend. So that was an issue before. And to me, adding Kyrie just made it worse. I mean, obviously, he's a good player, but he's not a defender. And you got to win. No matter how exciting the game is, you win on the defensive end. So you kind of just showed that. I mean, I know we're going to talk about, but all championship teams, even even in other sports. So that's what I say to that. But Jay, Jay was a he was a uh, he was a savant coaching him because he 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 always thought the game. Uh, a lot of people don't know that he was always a guy that studied the game. So he would come in and get film, and he would watch film all the time. And I think that the film gave him an edge. And then he was just so competitive, probably one of the most competitive people I've ever been around. So it didn't matter what it was. He was trying to he was trying to be first and trying to be the best at it. And just his defense, uh, he he would he would energize the guys just from his energy and what he brought to the table every day. And not just he wasn't as big of a, a, a verbal leader as he was by example. So you almost had to get on board and follow the leader because he played so hard all the time mm -hmm. so great career um yeah great career olympic gold medalist and he is uh, i'm i'm super proud of him coach you, you, you're good at this i'm not gonna lie you mentioned uconn that's the next question i had you already talked about tournament but i, I still have you're good you're real real good <laughs> all right speaking of excitement uconn uh, just won the national championship what were your overall thoughts on college basketball this season well first of all i i, I think that I think that the it was it was a great season, first and foremost. Uh, I think that the NIL and the transfer portal has changed the game completely, and it has created a, a situation where you can rebuild your team faster. A new coach taking over a new program can build it faster. Um, you can uh, you you can. You, you, it's, it's not a situation where you're building super teams, uh -huh. but it is a situation where you can rebuild your roster and you can get quality guys, therefore creating more parity in basketball because now you have guys that have already gone somewhere and said, you know what, I went for the whole, you know, the hoopla the first time. This time I'm going somewhere where I can play. I'm just as good as as Ray Rogers from 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 UMES. So I'm going to go over here to Howard and I'm going to beat him because I was beating him every day in practice. So you're like, you're getting that type of thing. And, and, and I thought that it was, I thought it was great that, you know, a lot of people talk about the, the ratings and that, and the fact that they didn't have the blue bloods. And I, I loved it the way that they, they had it because everybody earned it. You got to earn it. You can't get there with your name. When we played, when we played Duke in the tournament that year that we, we spoke about earlier, that's the main thing our guys kept talking about. Like, hey, man, that ain't got nothing to do with us. They won those championships. That ain't had nothing to do with us. And that's kind of how guys think nowadays. So I thought it was I thought it was great. I thought it was great for FAU to do what they did and come in and, 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 and have. I, I thought Kansas State would have gotten there because it almost seemed like it was destiny for them. Uh -huh. But – they, they built that program up. Tang, he does a, a tremendous job. Uh, I can't say that, 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 that I thought he would do this this fast, but I, but I thought he would be successful just, just knowing him and spending time talking to him. But uh, UConn was the best team. I mean, and, and, and what it showed is, is that you don't have, it's not where you start, it's where you finish. Mm -hmm. Because they did not start out, they weren't ranked in the top 20. Then when they got ranked, they had a period of time where they had a they had a, a struggle adjustment and then they worked it out. That's what it's about right there. That, that, that's what it's about. And so I, I thought they were the best team. I, I would have been surprised had uh, San Diego State beat them in the, in the championship because they could go inside, they could go outside. Uh, I thought Jordan Hawkins – was tremendous. I mean, it's like Ray point out Ray, Ray Allen point two or 2.0. Um, it's, it's, it, it was, it was a great tournament. I, I thought it was great. I know that's a longer way answer, yeah, a no. long answer, but it's a good I answer. Enjoyed it. it is a good answer. I have, I have a follow up question to that then who, who would you say coach or t coach or player to be honest, would you rose their stock in the tournament? 
Wow. Clearly all the coaches that made it to the Final Four raised their stock. Obviously, mm-hmm. Hurley raised his even more winning it. But I thought uh, Jerome Tang raised his. I thought um, – and you see the result of it. Guys winning Amir uh, Abdurrahim, who is Sharif's brother, Sharif Abdurrahim, who I coached at Cal. So I've been knowing Amir since he was 12. I was so proud of him. He may, maybe even younger than that. But I was so <laughs> proud of him. And he raised his stock. And then it, it, it mm. got him – another job to South Florida, which uh, I'm happy for him. And that's great. You know, it was a time where you had to do it on a more consistent basis, but now it's, it's a little bit different. And you've had quite a few coaches. You even saw that last year from the coach at Florida. Now was at San Francisco and, and, and the like. So I can, I can name examples, but this year in particular, uh, that, that stands out to me that, that guys rose their stock. Uh, coach from from fairly Dickinson winning and then boom I mean he just talked about the fact that he was a division two coach playing in front of 100 to 200 people and now he's playing in front of now he's coaching in front of of millions and then it produced a job for him at Iona so it, it's those coaches stand out that they they definitely wrote uh, they created or, or raised their profile uh, in coaching but uh, it's it, again a tribute all those schools benefited from having the ability to bring guys in from, from the transfer portal. Now it does affect high school kids in a negative yeah, way, I know. but, but it, but it does, it does allow a program to create a situation where they are, they can build their program up a lot faster than they had in the past. Yeah. That's the only issue is that the, the high school kids, I, I, I feel for them. Cause I feel like it's totally different from how it used to be. Like now, if you get an established player in college, it helps your program, you know, grow faster. Right. It does. It does. I mean, high school, it just, hey, you know, that's that's how it goes. That's that's the ecosystem. You know, it's always the <laughs> ecosystem. And and that's how it goes. You just got to just got to keep grinding. And and basically what's happening is the high school guys are now going to schools and they're getting better. And then they're looking and either staying there or saying, hey. Now I want to go to another uh, school and and have another situation. And as a coach, I mean, you're already getting a guy that's been coached. He's been he's been he's been pressed. He's been yelled at. He's got the discipline. He he almost kind of now formulates and knows what he really wants now, or what he's really capable of doing, mm-hmm. or if he, or if he really loves it or not, because. Sometimes it just exposes you. You think I used to always tell guys when I recruit them, I said, listen, if you don't really love this game and then you probably shouldn't come play for me because it's going to almost it's going to be like work to you. If I have to get on you to run in the morning or to go to a workout, then that's you have to be self-motivated. I, I'm not supposed to coach effort and focus. I'm supposed to, to coach skills and teach you the game and and teach you how to be more effective with what you have. So uh, I used to tell guys that all the time, but I think some some players, and I used to say this, I used to tell my assistant coaches, I said, yeah, he looks more like a fan than he is, than he than he really loves the game. Because if you're a fan, that's okay. But as a fan, I, I can't have guys, I, I don't want to coach the guys that are just fans. I, I don't want that. Because you're just a fan of the game. If you love the game and you want to be a part of it, that's a little bit different. So that to me, it stands out a lot because those guys just, you know, you, 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 you're not, you're not embracing the grind and, and, and what's involved in, in, in being as good as you could possibly be. I like, I like that thought process. I never thought about it that way. If you're a fan, you're a fan mm. of basketball, but you don't got the desire. It's totally different. You're right. That's, I've never thought about it that way. Yeah. A lot of guys sitting on the bench are the fans. Got great seats. Very true. Very true. All right. Wow. Coach, Coach, I mentioned this. Like, you're from D.C., so this, I have a hard question for you, like a real hard question. All right, man, all right, man, here we go. Are you a Commanders fan or a Cowboys fan? Because you know that's how it is in this area. I don't I don't root for no NFL teams. Oh, oh okay. I stopped that. I, I stopped you. that when when the Kaepernick situation happened. I got you. I got you. Okay. So, 
That, that's a whole nother show there. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, as soon as you said that, I already, I already knew. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't. No, they, they're not get that. I don't waste no time or energy on none of that. Now, I enjoy watching good games, mm. and I root for players. Gotcha. So I want to see the players do well. You know, all power to them. That I, I think is great, and I think they should use their voice. Um, but, but yeah, I'm, I'm all for that. Chase Young used to go to my camps. I know his mother, father really well. So I've been knowing Chase since he was a little guy. Uh, and you just mentioned the commanders and the Cowboys. Now, when I did root for a team, it definitely was not the team down in Texas. It wasn't that team. <laughs> That's for sure. But, but I, 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 I appreciate Dak's leadership. Um, I appreciate the things that he's been through. I just, I just, I just appreciate players and their and their journeys. So that's, yeah, that's my thing. But I am, I am a Washingtonian. That, that's no question about that. I love it. I love it. Mambo's yeah, Vole, Vole, See, he, he, <laughs> he, he missed our, he missed our DMV basketball special. So oh, yeah. that, that's what we're going to bring him back for when we talk about <laughs> DC basketball. Like it was, yeah. it was dope. So we're going, we're going to definitely do part two. Okay. True. Okay. That's a bet. <laughs> All right, so coach. All right, so we're going, now we're getting down to the real question. So, coach, after having success at Cal and being an NBA scout, what made you choose Morgan State as the coach as your next coaching job? You want the real answer? I want the real answer. So we want it's real over here. <laughs> that, was, that was the opportunity I had. So mm -hmm. I had I sat out of college basketball for what amounted to ten years. They gave me an eight year sanction, and it didn't start until the year after I left. So it, it ended up the year I got in the year, got back in a year afterwards. So I just, I was nipping at the bud. I, I wanted to get back in. I wanted to share. I wanted to, I felt like, like they were like they, when I say they, um, they were kind of dismissing the success that, that, that we had had at Cal. And it was almost like, you know, that line with Jay and Jay Z song where he says, uh, you said you made whole. Okay, then make another one. So my thing was, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do it again. And that 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 was my driving force to get back. So you know, you know, they didn't pay me very much money when I first took the job. They could have, you know, they could have paid me two packs of Twizzlers and some M and M's, and I would have took it. But I just wanted, I needed the platform. I needed the platform in the venue. And I remember a lot of a lot of my coaching friends saying, even though they didn't give me a job, they were saying, Bowles, you know, that's a dead end. And I was mm. like, Man, listen, I'm going in to coach and I'm going to get this thing done. And uh, when I got in there and it was in it and it was it was the goal was to build it. And that we did. So I'm proud of what we were able to do there. But um, I, I, you know, I'd be sitting here telling you, I interviewed at Hampton and I interviewed at Morgan and, and, and I got the Morgan job and, and it didn't matter to me which one it was going to be. They did not offer me the Hampton job, um, but they did offer me, uh, the Morgan job. And so I took it right away and the uh, rest is history. Coach, I'm glad that you mentioned that somebody said to you it was a dead end job because that's part of my issue is the perception of HBCUs when people don't know the history of HBCU basketball. We just lost Willis Reed. And when I think Willis Reed, man, I think about Earl DePearl and John McClendon, those big names, Earl Lloyd. HBCU basketball has such rich, rich you know what I'm saying, history. It, it's real. And it's sad that the perception has been what it's been, although we're getting better. We're going to get there too. But now that you are part of HBCU Go, how – do we get back to that place where the best players potentially choose an HBCU and the game just continues to evolve to where we regularly, regularly produce pros at HBCU? Well, well, let me say that. Let me say this right now. Now, mm -hmm. some of the perception of the HBCU athletics is warranted because mm -hmm. what happens is, is there's the small thinking. I remember when I did an interview with, uh, I can't remember the, the outlet, but I did an interview and they asked me, they said, well, what's the difference between being at like Cal and being at, at Morgan State? And he said, and I said, it's like big business. And he said, it's small business. I said, no, big business 
corporation and mom and pop. I said, it's that far. I said, because it's the, it's the thinking, it's the thinking, it's the, it's the, you have to think outside the box. And unfortunately, I, I think it's great that people can get their start at HBCU, but I think that you should, no matter what, what field it is, you should be able to either network outside of it or go work outside of it and come back. Because what happens is they only know what they know. So I can't tell you how many times say, oh, that's not how we do it here. You go, what? I mean, what, look at the results that what you've been doing have been getting mm -hmm. you. So let's not get into, you know, this is the way we've done it. And you, so you have to be open to, to other, other ideas and other areas. And oftentimes that's where a lot of times when, when you see growth in a program, you'll hear people say, man, that coach was tough to deal with. Well, if he's fighting for his program, that's why you're going to, that's why you're going to refer to him as tough because he's trying to get you to, to think different. He's trying to, he's fighting for his program. He's trying to build, he's trying to, 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 to get you to see a different vision which is the same thing you do when you battle your kids. I don't know if you guys have children, but when you're raising your children, you're trying to get them to see something that they don't see. I mean, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a, lot, of, it's a lot of similarities to it, but, mm -hmm. but that's, the, that's, the, that, that's one of the biggest differences in, in the levels. And people don't give back as much in HBCU. A lot of times the people that are giving back, the alumni that are giving back are the older alumni. So they, they have more pride in it. But, and in, in defense of some of the younger ones, they go through and you have such a hard time dealing with the financial aid office. You know, you got papers sitting on the desk. Miss Johnson don't want you to go and touch it. You're like, Miss Johnson's right there on the desk. Yeah, but Miss jo Miss Johnson, I got to get to it and I got other things to do and I'm getting ready to go to lunch and then I'm going on vacation and when she go on vacation, nobody can go in there and touch that paper. And it's just sitting there. And even though the assistant, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it, if you went to HBC, you, you know that story. So sometimes you leave, they leave a bad taste in their mouths and they don't have the same experience. I think older alumni have a different appreciation for it because it probably was purer and it was, it, it was you know, they, had a, they had just had a better experience. And, and I'm not saying you can't have a great one because my son is an HBCU grad and he, he, he loved it not love the experience, but he loves his, his school. So he has some tough experiences there, but he, the overall, he has an appreciation for it. So um, again, that's, that's, that's what I would say would be one of the differences uh, uh, in, in the two. But you can do it though, you can do it. I just don't know if they'll ever be able to raise the money NIL wise to compete with with uh, with the top programs around the country, so it might be a situation where you better be comfortable where you are because you're not gonna get and you're not gonna be able to get invited to the next level. Mm. So, coach, is there like it's some innovative way that they can go about doing it? So you want me to get you, you want me to get the answers for free? That's that's. <laughs> I'll try. Hey. That's what you want me to do hey, for that. Just, just, a little bit. just a little bit. Just a little bit. A little bit. You know, because, because I, I'm, I'm telling you, Coach, uh, these HBCU streets are divided, man. Coach Prime has said similar things to what you said, and <laughs> I know some people got some strong emotions about it. And I'm like, I can't wait to hear what folks are going to say. Well, you already know some people I'm talking about. It's going to be fun. Um, but you're not saying you're not saying anything that is incorrect uh, because things need to evolve. We just feel like the progression has been taking place and I feel like we're heading in the right direction. So we trying to keep the ball rolling, coach. We ain't trying to get you to give away no free secrets, free secrets right. or anything like that. Well, well, we, we, we de they definitely headed in the right direction, but but you gotta you 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 like I said, you just gotta be open to other ideas. You gotta be mm -hmm. open to 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 being different and not just following what everybody else does. You know what I mean? You can't mm -hmm. you can't sometimes you know we get the message later. And we're, we're just now starting to follow that path. Well, you know, now that path is old. You got you to gotta kind of jump ahead and fast forward ahead. You know, when, 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 when Coach Prime was saying what he was saying about Jackson State or when, before he went there, and once he got there, I already knew. I, I, I lived that movie already. He, he has a bigger platform for which to, to sell it, and social media is bigger now. But 
we we I went through that whole thing. I knew exactly what he was talking. Even when he was talking to Cole, I knew what he was talking about. And even when when Ed Reed had the Bethune mm. situation, I felt <laughs> him as well. I, I obviously I didn't talk about it that particular way, but I felt him as well. So a lot of that is a lot of that is is organic. I mean, it is what it is, and that's where a lot of the change has to happen. It has to start there and it has to start in the communities. They can, they can put together NIL collective. You got, you got people that could do that. You got, okay. if you think about, think about Howard's now, Howard, Howard has a brand. Yes. So Howard is selling something a little bit different. You know, it's, it's a brand. It's like, it's, 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 it's like, to me, like the difference between Maryland and Georgetown, Georgetown is a brand. You know, it, it's Maryland is is a great situation, great opportunity, but Georgetown is a brand. Where Howard and the HBCUs is a brand. So you are selling not just the the NIL, but the the whole experience of being in the nation's capital and the access you have. I mean, your 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 uh, the vice president of the country is a is a grad comes into the locker. I mean, you know, like that's you know that's a that's a different type of deal you know the swim team has the uh, uh unbelievable off the chart experience going to the swim meet i mean that kind of thing is is a little bit different so i just think that that you just have to have a group of alumnus that come together and they have to they have to be conscious about it, it has to be intentional about providing those opportunities for the student athletes and that, I mean, it's no simpler than, than that. Mm. That's, that's a whole nother show, Wole, right? <laughs> I know, right? It really is. It really is. No, I, it's I, all good. Know, <laughs> no, I was, one thing I was going to ask you real quick, because you mentioned Howard and being a brand. And I've always had this discussion. Me and Ray had this discussion before, but, you know, Howard had a good showing to me. Even they played Kansas, they had a good showing. Kansas was just far, high, like, just more athletic. But just, mm -hmm. let's just say if, if Howard, being that brand, was able to, get to the sweet 16 right would that uplift the whole hbc hbcu community in terms of basketball do you think that because they're, they're a brand and they're an hbcu school i think that definitely for sure like okay. like when, when norfolk state norfolk state won a game yeah uh and this was before the the uh first four mm -hmm. but norfolk state yeah. won a game mm -hmm. in missouri yeah, yeah, I remember that game, yeah. When they beat Missouri, when Coppin beat, I think it was Iowa State. Yes. Yep. No, it was Hampton. Hampton, Hampton. Hampton beat Iowa State. Hampton, Hampton, Hampton. beat. Yeah. Coppin yeah, Coppin. beat. Cincinnati, Coppin. Was, it, was it Cincinnati they beat? I, I can't remember what it beat, but uh, I was just giving examples yeah. of, of, of HBCUs that have won games in, in the tournament. So what you see is you even see it, you even see it when there's a black coach, the 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 community kind of comes together and starts kind of rooting for that, that particular school. So if an HBCU did do that, absolutely. I, I think it could, I, I think it would be monumental. I think it would be monumental and you would see uh, a tremendous influx uh, with that particular school. Um, but I think in order for the HBCUs to, to come all the way up, they'd have to, they have to change their, their thought patterns with the, the resources and how they travel, um, how how you how you present things, um, everything. I mean, it's it's, it's it has to be kind of uh, overall uh, uplifting, and I think that that if they do that, then you're talking about a situation where you could create a viable uh, option for for student athletes. You know what? Um, you just mentioned Howard, and um, you've covered enough games. HBCU coached, obviously, um, at Morgan, and you you've seen many players over the years. Um, currently, Robert Covington, as we know, is the only HBCU um, graduate that is in the NBA. Um, of course, from Tennessee State. And based on what you've seen lately, can you shout out any players that you think are close to that level? I think Shai Odom from from Howard has the opportunity over the next several years, if he continues to develop and stay healthy, that he could be one of those guys to, that, that plays in the NBA eventually. 
What about you? Have you seen anybody that you feel like their game is at that level at this point? Well, um, I can't say I've necessarily seen anybody that that I feel like has that's at that level right now. But I will <laughs> say this, that the challenge that you have is they'll start out at HBCU because there's been plenty of them that have now because <laughs> of the portal, they 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 transferred. So I know that I had two players, uh, Taiwan Kenley and mm -hmm. Bill Carr, the last two guys that I had that were were high level players. Both of those guys, there's no question if that portal was available. Not saying because they didn't like it at Morgan, but because they they would have felt like they could play at a higher level. They wanted to experience it because I, I was getting I was getting calls that they were going to transfer. So wow. I can tell you from, from ACC to Big East to wow. the Big Ten, a lot of those guys called me, said, Bose, we you know we hear that, you know, this kid is going to transfer. And I was like, nah, they're not transferring. But I will say that if the portal was there, those guys, I, I, I would have, I, I would have bet that they probably would have, would have, would have left and wanted to experience something a little different. And that's crazy because Taiwan, I cover him when he played for the Go-Go, you know, the G League squad. He still made it, I mean, to the pro level and, and was and was really good. Um, I think a lot of people didn't know who he was. I remember when that new arena um, opened up, um, Entertainment Sports, um, I remember people coming out to see just him because, of course, he played at Morgan. So right. I'm wondering, just based on what you said, if that would have created opportunity for, the, for him to potentially play at you know, that, that higher level, of course, the NBA. But it's still, I think, an accomplishment for him. Um, so HBC was still got the odds stacked against them, of course. Um, but back when you were coaching Morgan, of course, you had some good runs, NCAA tournament. You played against a young Blake Griffin and upset Maryland at Maryland. Um, how'd you do it back then before all this? And, uh, yeah, you've been covering games this year. Are we, are we seeing, and we've seen more upsets this year, including my alma mater. I'm going to keep talking about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> We all saw um, Bradley, no, it's, not, it's always good to get one. It's always good to it's always good to have one. Uh, um, but, and you talked about parity too, so we getting closer, right? We no about question. Coming. No question. No question. No question. Um, no, I, I will say this: that that if if I had if we had come along during the Black Lives Matter movement, mm -hmm. it probably would have been even better. I mean, we had significant teams, but again. We we had older teams. My teams were older. So, you know, you got to remember I had one of the first six year players because he had he got a, a waiver after he had already redshirted from an injury. I had the first one of the first grad transfers in Bubakar Coley. And then I had some junior college guys. So we were older. Reggie, Reggie Holmes, who is now the all-time leading scorer. He did not even start until his junior year. So mm -hmm. I had older guys. Now, he still is the leading scorer because he came off the bench and could really score. But I had older, tough guys. I mean, them guys, Itchy and Terrell Green and, and Marquise Cately. And, I mean, those guys were, those guys were grown men. Uh, I mean, I could have ran a daycare because most of the guys had kids. So... <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was it was a little bit different, but it's it's very similar to what they are doing now. The teams are older with the portal and with with uh, the COVID year. So, mm -hmm. you know, people forget a lot of a lot of the players Well, all the athletes got another year. So whereas a, a person would have been a fifth year senior, they then a six year senior. So that COVID gave everybody another year. Um, so. Uh, I just I just think that that it's uh, to answer your question, it, it was it was that's how we we built it. And uh, it was a, it was a grind. And I had some tough guys that had chips on their shoulders. They had been recruited by some other schools um, and they, they they had a point to prove. So we all kind of had a point to prove. And mine was to to take another university, another a program to the NCAA tournament multiple times, not just mm -hmm. once, but multiple times. And that, that was, that was my goal. And, uh, I had, I had the right mix of guys and I had the right mix of staff. And, and, uh, so that, that, that's what afforded us that opportunity to do that. Well, coach, I love your intensity. We were, we were, we ran out of time, but we got to have you back on. Um, 
I remember I used to watch you on the, on the bench. Sometimes you would just be sitting sitting back, arm around the chair, looking like you were like you knew your team was going to win. Like you had that confidence. Now you bring just this intensity. You on the sideline calling games now. Are you enjoying this? this I guess this new journey for you. <laughs> you got Charlie Neal next to you. He said he he said he's trying to teach you some things. We saw him at the Miac. So, yeah. what's next for you? Well, let me say this. First of all, what you saw on the sideline was me holding it in, like trying to keep my composure <laughs> to think about what I needed to do next. In practice, this is what you saw. Like like practice okay. was, was was probably where I was the most intense. Even though some of my players would argue with you that 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 they didn't see what you saw on on the sideline, <laughs> and, 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 and a lot of times I was trying to coach my teams to 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 prepare themselves. Like I wanted them to learn how to react to situations. I was thinking of you know postseason. I was thinking of towards the end of the year. I wanted them to be able to to go through some experiences and work it out and work those things out. And that, that would help their, their IQ, it would help their chemistry, and it would give them more confidence that they would be able to, they would have gone through some experiences. So that's what, that a lot of times, that's what, that's probably what you what you saw. So um, yeah, that's, you know, just to, to put that out there. But I appreciate you guys having me on. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it, it, it was it was great, man. And I, 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 I would definitely, welcome another opportunity to come on your show and spend time with you guys talking about uh, HBCU basketball and basketball as a, as a, as a whole. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So thanks again for your time, Coach. And yeah, we'll be, we'll be calling. I hope that I'll see you on the sideline. We're going to talk further about, about what you said earlier. Like I said, it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting discussion. <laughs> well, you know, uh, you know I did games that. before. I did games before I went to Morgan. So this is kind of my second time around. Oh, okay. I have to. I, I had you know you had to get used to it again. But I had done those. I had done games before and worked with Charlie in in the past. Mm. But uh, so it's good to be back back on the sideline. And now you have even more outlets. So yes. it's it's a good thing. Looking forward to it though. Well, congrats and yeah, looking forward to having you on next time again. Thanks for your time, brother. Thank you. Thank you Appreciate it. All right. All right. That's Coach Todd Bowles, guys. Continue to check us out, HBCU Corner. We'll be back. Just the beginning, fam.